Play isn't just for young kids. Middle schoolers and even teenagers benefit from playful, engaging social experiences that are connected rigorously to their core content. We usually let very young children like you know learn through play and then we think that from middle school or especially for teenagers it's time to become serious. But research keeps showing that such meaningful, playful social experiences can actually be extremely rigorous and create deep durable learning for them. Let's say you want to hit some middle school physics standards. What is a compressive force? Can you explain what is a tensile force? Can you apply it to solving problems? Now I can do this in a traditional way. Hey this is a compressive force. This is a tensile force. Or I can give them a playful challenge which is who can design the best bridge with ice cream sticks and glue that can withstand the most weight. And through that, you will learn that hey, truss bridges end up using a lot of, say, compressive force. And then there are other bridges that, suspension bridges that use a lot of tensile force. You also understand where a bridge is likely to break. And as a side, you also realize that triangles are extremely stable compared to any other polygon. And if you're wondering why, the sneak peek is that to change the shape of a triangle, you have to change the side length. There is no way to change the shape without that. But that is not true for a square or any other polygon. And just as they have fun and think, hey, great science project, we are done, they get news that their project is just halted, it's not accepted. And you might wonder why do this, right? We pull the rug under them because it creates that attention playfully for them to go like, wait, what just happened? And then we tell them that two people in the team are fighting and both of them belong to the two different sides across which the bridge is being built. And in this case, it's China and Taiwan. And their job now is to understand and resolve this conflict. But when you try to understand the conflict between two people or two groups of people, you end up learning a bit of the history as to why that exists. So we actually did this rug pull because the project is actually a human-centric design project. And we had a core standard the content standard we had to hit there, which is, do they know the first step of design thinking of the different steps, which is empathize. And I could have told them, hey, there are these steps in design thinking, and this is the first step, let me walk you through the double diamond, but I wanted them to feel it. And also, we playfully keep them on their toes, that they think it's something, and then like you push them, now they suddenly, their error alarm is hit, and they're like, wait, paying a lot more attention. These guys are like not letting me predict what's going to come, and that makes them more engaged, right? Look at other examples of places that have built bridges that make two people come together. They look at real world examples of like seesaws built across walls, and imagery and names used to convey that, hey, it's for both of you. And then they redesign and re submit and get feedback and finally submit a bridge design. But most importantly, they take away a lesson that they are going to hold for the rest of their lives, which is that whenever you design, you're designing for a human. And the most important thing to remember is that, and the easiest thing to forget is the humans that are going to be walking across that bridge and why they're going to be doing that and what you want them to feel. And with more such experiences, they'll keep this durable learning with them rigorously, even though the learning looks joyful and playful. In fact, especially because of that. Such blending of joy and rigor, starting with core standards, but giving them exciting pursuits to go after and explore makes it so that their learning is more memorable and they engage deeply and secondly creating purpose and real world relevance makes it so that their motivation is high and they're willing to take these challenges on more and more as they grow seriously